How's it going everyone? Welcome to Shifting Lanes. My name is Hanson and for this video I'm sitting inside the 2023 Toyota Prius Prime. This new Prius is head-turning, efficient, powerful-ish and it drives really nice. Out of all the past Priuses that has been produced for almost 25 years now, this is finally the one Prius that I, a car enthusiast, would consider buying. And in this video review, I'll break down my thoughts in five categories, the exterior, interior, the technology, the power, and the driving experience so that you have a better idea before you buy. So if you wanna jump ahead, check out the chapters down below. So let's get this review started with the exterior first. Previously, the Toyota Prius design has always reflected the spirit of the car. The Prius being an environmentally conscious car that wasn't too fun to drive, the car's exterior design didn't really try to stand out. It looked super plain and uninteresting, and up until a few years ago, it started looking very weird. I don't know what happened in the Toyota design studio, but the design mantra of the Prius has completely changed with this new platform. It's now attractive, it looks fast, modern, and it looks premium. The front end has a really interesting design where the headlights, the grille, and the body colored sections intertwine with one another. The grille itself isn't massive looking, which is counter to what we've been seeing in many other cars, and it's kind of refreshing. The lines are pretty smooth, except for that awkward license plate holder that has a permanent fixture on the front bumper. It's not a big deal if you live in a state that requires it, but for those that don't need it, you see this weird box at all times. Around the side, the profile of the Prius is noticeably different than the previous generation. The front end and the roof line looks like it's been merged together. The car basically looks like a ramp and the coefficient of drag is a low 0.27, which is pretty good. But strangely, it's not as good as the previous Toyota Prius. If you're looking for something that's very slippery, check out the Mercedes-Benz AMG EQS, and that has a coefficient of drag of 0.2. Continuing further back, the upsweeping character lines remind me of some Lexus cars and perhaps even the BMW i8. And if you look at the rear door's window, it tapers off sharply, giving this car a silhouette that's similar to a four-door coupe. And finally at the back, the Prius gives off a performance car vibe. It has a short rear overhang, it has a tapered rear end, exposing the broad wheel arch, and then the blacked out sections by the hatch gives this Prius a muscular look. Overall, I am in love with the Prius design. It is such a departure from the Prius stereotype because it feels like the past Priuses, Toyota built a hybrid car and then the designers tried to make it look as pretty as possible. That's why the car always looked kind of goofy and nerdy. Whereas in this platform, it seemed like the designers built this bold shape and then the Toyota engineers built a hybrid vehicle to fit inside that bold design. So I'm going to give the exterior a rating of 10 out of 10. I think you're gonna love it. It's definitely a head-turning design. Next, let's talk about the interior. And just like the exterior received a massive update, so did the interior. You no longer have the center-mounted instrument cluster. I always thought that was kind of an odd design choice. This interior design is now somewhat more traditional where the instrument cluster is right in front of the driver. This is the same layout that you can find on the Toyota BZ4X, which I've reviewed before, so if you want to check it out, click the link up in the corner. I have complained about this layout previously in that video, where depending on your seating position, the top of the steering wheel may block a portion of the instrument cluster's display. This wouldn't be a problem if your steering wheel is a yoke design, which the BZ4X and the Lexus RZ are flirting with, with the steer-by-wire design, but until that system can be sold here in the States, a round steering wheel is what we'll have. And if you want to be able to see the instrument cluster better, you may just have to lower the steering wheel a bit or raise your seat. Other than that complaint, the height of the instrument cluster is nice. It's almost like a heads up display kind of height where it's directly in line with your field of view. So your eyes don't have to move that much. As for the steering wheel, this has a good feel and nine and three position. You have physical buttons on the steering wheel, which is much appreciated. The only small complaint I have about this wheel is that the volume control doesn't have a press in function to quickly mute the music. That's normally not a big deal if the volume dial is nearby the driver, but this one is close to the passenger, so it's a little bit out of reach depending on how tall you are. Looking beyond the steering wheel, you'll find some extra buttons 
On the left-hand side, you'll spot the controls for the heated steering wheel, heated front windshield, and automatic high beams. And on the right side, you'll find the parking assist button and the 360-degree camera view. Moving to the center console, it is dominated by this large 12.3-inch touchscreen. And I'll talk more about this in the technology section of the review. And right below that, you find this red LED ambient light. And this light is kind of like a status light or notification. And this light will actually blink at you if the car in front of you has started moving away. Beneath it, you'll find the climate controls. And this unit has heated and ventilated seats and the controls are conveniently placed here instead of buried in the touchscreen menus. Moving to the transmission tunnel you find a couple of USB-C ports and right below that you have a storage compartment and you can even open this revealing the hashtag hidden compartment so you can hide your secret stash and right below that you find a couple of cup holders and then you have your transmission nub and right behind that you have your drive mode selector, your parking brake button, your auto EV and HV or hybrid vehicle setting and also your EV or HV hold charge. This is a method to keep the car in EV mode so you're just using the electricity and the batteries or to keep it in hybrid mode so that you could preserve your electric range. And right beside that you have your traction control and your auto brake hold button. You have your wireless charger. I'll talk more about this in the tech section. And right behind that you have your armrest. You find two USB-C ports here and then a medium storage compartment. As for the seats in the Prius, I really can't complain about them. They're very comfortable, they're supportive. The materials are nice. This is the soft text material. And I'll just say that they're pretty standard for a Toyota vehicle. They're not bad and they're not exceptional. For the second row, the rear legroom is not as roomy as other cars in this segment at 35.9 inches. And cargo capacity is okay at 20.3 cubic feet. It's not as large as other vehicles of this size with a hatchback design. So interior wise, I'll give this new Prius an eight out of 10. I think the new design trades that old goofy personality for a modern and smart look. I don't like the design of the instrument cluster and how the steering wheel partially blocks the view, but it's not a showstopper and you can easily adjust the steering wheel or your seat. Now let's talk about the technology and let's start with this infotainment system. Toyota has included their new audio multimedia system for this Prius and it works really nicely. This widescreen format gives plenty of real estate and it allows for large buttons and very legible menu options. Everything is laid out clearly and logically and it's pretty easy to find anything that you need. It also comes with a built-in very good voice assistant that you could pull up by pressing this button. It uses natural language so you could just speak to it like you're speaking to a person instead of a robot. And I love that in all new Prius Primes, wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto is now standard. And when you pull that up, it takes over this entire screen. Also taking up the entire screen is the 360 degree camera view system. And that is available for this XSE premium trim. As for the sound system, this is using JBL. It has eight speakers and a subwoofer and the performance is just very average. As for charging up, there's plenty of USB type C's all around the car and there's also this wireless charger right next to the gear shifter. The performance of this wireless charger can be hit or miss depending on your phone and also whether your phone has a case on it or not. I have this iPhone 14 Pro and it has the standard Apple leather case on it and when I put this in the wireless charger it would connect for about two or three seconds and disconnect. But if I take this phone off the case and put it on this thing will maintain a charge throughout my drive. So again, your mileage may vary. In my opinion, this is not a good design. And if you wanna see a good wireless charger in a car, check out this video up here. Safety wise, this comes with Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, which means that this has a long laundry list of safety features. And I really like all those systems in this car because with the press of one single button, this car will easily follow traffic on the highway. And I also like that all Prius Primes will come standard with blind spot monitoring system and rear cross traffic alert. I think those two features should be standardized on all cars. So for technology, I'll give this one an eight out of 10. I love all the new features that you can find in this car with the exception of the wireless charger because that can really be hit or miss. Okay, let's talk about the power next. This is a Prius Prime, so it's not just a hybrid, but it's also a plug-in hybrid EV. So this thing can operate just like any other EV car, but only for a limited range of 39 miles for this XSE trim and 44 miles for the SE grade. 
that's pretty good for a plug-in hybrid. And considering that the average commute in America is about 40 miles or so, as long as you keep topping this off every night with electrons, you won't be filling this up with gas anytime soon. So not only is this powered by a two liter inline four cylinder engine, there's also an electric motor generator and a 13.6 kilowatt hour battery that's going to allow for pure EV operation. Altogether, you could have a net 220 system horsepower and 139 pound-feet of peak torque. This is a huge improvement over the previous Prius that it's a night and day difference. This new Prius is not just a fresh face with some new sheet metal. It's also a reasonably quick car that you won't be disappointed in. Zero to 60 miles per hour is done in 6.6 .6 seconds, according to Toyota, which is about three seconds faster than the previous generation. As for charging performance, looking at the port, this comes with the J1772 plug, which means that it only allows level one or level two AC charging. You won't be able to take this to a DC fast charging station because this doesn't have the DC pins portion of the charging port. If you just have a level one charging port in your house, which is basically your standard household outlet, then it'll take about 11 hours to completely fill this up. If you have a level two charger, it should take about four hours. This XSE Premium also has an added trick up its sleeve. This has a solar roof, which is a $650 option. This can slowly add some charge to the battery. As you can see in this car, it has managed to add about 46.1 kilowatt hours over the lifetime of the car, which at the time of the recording of this review is just over 4,500 miles. It's not significant, but it's not nothing. As for fuel economy, this Prius Prime will get you 52 miles per gallon combined. That's also the same rating for the non-prime Priuses. Now that's not the highest MPGs recorded in a Prius. I think that award goes to the Toyota Prius L Eco trim, but considering this Prius is much more powerful than the older one, and it's also much more fun to drive, and it gives you still very good efficiency, this is pretty much the best Prius ever produced. So for power, I'm giving this Prius Prime a nine out of 10. I love the fact that I can operate this in EV mode for up to 39 miles and that this is no longer a slow car. I still maintain that plug-in hybrid EVs are one of the better cars to buy as we make a transition to EV cars because with plug-in hybrids, you don't have range or charging anxiety. When you're going on long road trips, if you can find a charger, great. If you can't find one, then you could just keep on going because this has a hybrid engine. Finally, let's talk about the driving experience. This new Prius is fun to drive. The added power makes the Prius a much more engaging car. The old one was slow and saving three seconds off the zero to 60 time in this new one, well, that's just an eternity in the modern car world. While it's not sports car quick, this will make your commutes much more livable than the previous generation Prius. This new Prius also rides on a new platform that has a lower center of gravity, it's more rigid, and the result is a car that feels more responsive and handles more tightly than before. I took this on my usual back roads and the new Prius drove brilliantly. It handled tightly and changed directions very willingly, whereas the old Prius felt more lethargic. This new Prius feels much more athletic and it's light on its feet. Meanwhile, the steering also felt responsive with good feedback and good on-center feel. The brakes on this car just felt okay with some vagueness that you get with some hybrid vehicles. And as for the ride quality, the Prius is more on the firm side of things, so it can feel a bit jarring on some rough roads, but I'd rather take that bit of discomfort for a more responsive ride. So from a driving experience perspective, I'll give this one a nine out of 10. This is the best driving Prius ever. I had a lot of fun driving it and you should test drive it and see it for yourself. So summarizing everything, I think this new Prius is unlike a Prius. It's no longer that dorky and boring looking car that introduced the world to hybrid cars. This is now a very attractive car that is equipped with great pieces of tech, decent power, and it drives brilliantly. So because of that, I'm giving this Prius Prime a rating of 8.8 .8 out of 10. I wanna thank you for watching all the way up to this point. If you have any comments or thoughts, please let me know in the comments below. If you've also learned something from this video, please consider hitting that like, subscribe, and that notification bell so that you can be notified the next time I make a new video. 
Let's wrap it up right there. My name is Hanson, and this has been the 2023 Toyota Prius Prime, and I'll see you in the next one.